Hi, my name is Patrick Holloman, and I've spent the past decade studying the historical evolution of computer and console game design. One of the most interesting things I've learned is that the history of digital game design has a central theme. That theme is, technological limitations, rather than holding video games back, actually drove the evolution of their design. Nowhere is that more true than in the genre of role-playing games. The game you're seeing on screen is a great example. This is The Bard's Tale, a computer RPG that originally came out in 1985. Like many of its contemporaries, The Bard's Tale attempted to adapt the tabletop RPG Dungeons & Dragons into computer form. And like all of its contemporaries, it couldn't really do that. The big limiting factor was the machines that were running these games. Personal computers in the 1980s didn't have a lot of memory or processing power, but this hurdle forced game designers to create new kinds of RPGs. The Bard's Tale is a kind of RPG that I call a simplification. Like all simplification-style RPGs, the Bard's Tale attempts to implement as much of the tabletop experience as possible, but it simplifies many tabletop design ideas to make them fit into a computer. The first and most important simplification of the game is the way that it limits all of the gameplay to the single city of Scarab Ray. Campaigns in tabletop RPGs tend to roam over large regions that include several towns or cities. Some of the Bard's Tale's peers, like Ultima, did do this. As a result, towns and dungeons in the early Ultima games were many, but sometimes very small. Because the Bard's Tale focuses entirely on one city, they can spend a lot more time making that city feel alive. That's why Scarab Bray is able to have six temples, seven taverns, three professional buildings, and a variety of dungeons, most of which have several floors. The small scope of Scarab Bray also frees its developer up to put a lot of time into combat, and it shows. Scarab Bray is brimming with more than 60 different enemies, most of whose designs are still charming today. Balance is a different matter. Enemies are extremely difficult in the first hour of gameplay, but they rapidly become more manageable as the player levels up. Even modern games that pride themselves on their high difficulty, like Dark Souls, do the opposite of this. There are many other design decisions in combat that seem questionable from a modern perspective. For example, when in combat, the player's first menu option is Party Attack. That sounds like a way of attacking as a group, but it's actually a way of attacking your own party members. In hindsight, this is a bafflingly bad decision, but it's a great example of how the process of streamlining RPG user interface was a longer one than most people imagine. My favorite part of The Bard's Tale is the magic system. Relative to its campaign size, The Bard's Tale has a surprisingly deep roster of magic spells, more than 70 in all. These spells deal damage, summon extra allies, enhance another character's fighting ability, and give other beneficial effects. There are also healing spells, but those make up less than 10% of the spells in the game, and a couple of them aren't very good. It strikes me that in his zeal to implement versions of his favorite D&D spells, the designer may have neglected some of the boring but necessary skills most RPGs have. This too is an example of how our best practices in game design have evolved over time. The last aspect of the design I want to mention is perhaps the Bard's Tale's most radical. In order to balance the power of spells, the Bard's Tale gives every spell a cost in spell points, and every caster a pool of those points to spend from. Spell, mana, or ability points are so common in modern RPGs that we barely think about them, but they did not exist in most tabletop RPGs in the 1980s. Instead, tabletop RPGs gave a fixed number of spell uses, and then specified a period of time before the character could use them again. But in those tabletop games, players might cross a large region and pass several days in a single moment of real time. The Bard's Tale, taking place in a small city, can't plausibly skip through time this way. Thus, the player is given spell points and a place to recharge them. I really like this because it's an example of how technical constraints created not only a new style of RPG, but actually inspired the creation of new game mechanics that we see as essential in modern games. In the next few videos, we're going to look at how other classic games adapted the tabletop RPG to the computer and console, and examine how those adaptations led to the game design ideas we take for granted today.